Embry Riddle'dan Rabu olacak. Şu an ekranda görüyorsunuz kendisini. E, sunumunu da yine büyük ekran olarak görebiliyorsunuz. Çok kısa söyleyeyim Embry, Embry Riddle kimdir diye. E, Embry Riddle dünyanın en büyük pilotaj ve havacılık ve uzay üniversitelerinden e, Dünyanın farklı noktalarında kampüsleri var. Ana kampüsleri tabii Amerika'da e, ama başka ülkelerde de kampüsleri var. Zaten şu an Robert çok detaylı bilgi verecek bize, bir sunum yapacak. Siz de o esnada o sunumunu yaparken aklınıza da sorular olduğunda lütfen sağdaki sohbet kısmına yazın sorularınızı. Sunumu bittikten sonra Robert e, soruları yanıtlıyor olacak. Eğer İngilizce sorabilirseniz İngilizce sorun lütfen. E, ama Türkçe sormayı tercih ederseniz Türkçe yazabilirsiniz. Biz burada yine e, aynı kısmı, sohbet kısmına Sorunuzun İngilizcesini e, yazıp raporta yönet- yöneltiyor olacağız. Herkese e, güzel bir webinar olsun. Görüşmek üzere. E, Robert, e, welcome again. We can start if you are ready. We are ready, ready to hear you. All right, perfect. Um, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Robert Brannigan. I go by Bobby. Um, I'm the Associate Director of International Emissions for Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Um, at our Daytona Beach campus. So today, um, the presentation is Careers in Aviation, Aerospace and Beyond. I'm also going to give you a lot of information about Embry-Riddle, um, about our campuses, about our um, tuition, scholarships, um, what you can do after you graduate as well. So um, we have our programs. Um, so without further ado, um, these are our campuses. So we have a campus in Florida, which I work at, in Daytona Beach. Um, we have a campus in Arizona, um, which is pretty close to Phoenix, Arizona, if you guys are familiar with that. And then we do have a worldwide online as well, which includes a campus um, in Singapore um, and online. So I do have a cool video that I wanted to show you um, to kick things off. So. aviation, business, and cybersecurity. A future defined by innovation. Finding solutions for industry partners is the world's premier aerospace institution. Her continuing success speaks for itself. We learn top distinctions across our campuses and worldwide. We're training the workforce of tomorrow, adding value to the industries we serve and expanding our growing global reach. We promote problem-based discovery in career-focused programs. We are the leading edge, a global education leader opening up opportunities for students. Our history and heritage spans nearly 100 years, founded with a vision of endless possibilities to launch new generations of pioneers and dreamers putting the future firmly into focus for us and for you. Emory Riddle Aeronautical University. What will you explore with us? So happy. All right, so that was just a quick little video. I want to show you a little bit more about um, you know, STEM fields and what Emory Riddle is specifically doing um, You know, as students that are um, at our campuses. So let's explore some possibilities for your future. Um, did you know that nearly 66 million jobs are supported worldwide in aviation and related fields? Um, of this, 10.2 million people work directly in the aviation industry. Um, here at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, our strength does lie in the fields of flight, engineering, business, technology, and space. So just a really cool graph. Um, History does show us how the role of aviation recovers from crisis. So obviously right now we're currently in a global pandemic, um, but we don't want that to deter anyone from wanting to join in the aviation field. So the stake is not to know if the traffic will recover, but when. So as you can see, we had the oil crisis, the Gulf crisis, um, the 9-11 terrorist attack here in New York City, um, the SARS and world recession. So, um, you know, as, the aviation industry continues to increase and grow, 
Um, it will see some dips um, due to things such as the coronavirus pandemic. Um, however, we will recover at some point. So at Embry-Riddle, our mission is your success. So seven of our Embry-Riddle graduates went on to become astronauts, which is pretty cool. Um, our Daytona Beach campus is about an hour away from Kennedy Space Center. So we actually have a viewing deck where we watch um, rockets actually go up in the air. Um, we have over 137,000 alumni around the globe. So we do have a lot of our industry leaders um, that actually are alums at Embry-Riddle or from Embry-Riddle, um, where they're able to connect with our current students um, offer them internships, co-ops, um, positions after they graduate, whatever it may be, um, because we do have all of our alum um, that are out in the fields. So we do have the top five online bachelor programs, um, ranked the top five for the past seven years. Um, number one in aerospace engineering, first and only aerospace physiology program um, at the bachelor level in the entire nation. So that has to do with um, health, it has to do with um, how you know, humans interact with machines in space and rockets, those types of things too. Um, nutritionists, such things like that. Um, first College of Security and Intelligence in the nation as well. So we actually have an ethical hacking lab um, at our Prescott, Arizona campus, which is pretty cool. Um, and we do have industry career expos that attract more than 100 companies and thousands of students. So we have it every fall and spring. Um, right now, uh, times are a little bit different, but normally we would. Um, and you know, we have the industry leaders at our campuses uh, conducting on-spot interviews. Um, they're, you know, going over um, what positions they have available, um, and they can give you some tips and tricks on how to land um, that job even before you graduate. So we do have a worldwide online campus, as I said. Um, so we were ranked the best um, online programs um, seven years running. So um, we do have, you know, a very strong online presence if you don't even have time to go to class, if you don't want to come to the United States, um, if you don't want to study in person, um, we definitely offer the flexibility and affordability of online. And they're industry leaders as well. Um, so we have you know, top ranked um, faculty members and a lot of the faculty members that teach the online courses also teach our on-campus courses. So moving into the different types of programs. So one of the STEM fields is aviation. So employment categories in support of air transportation are expected to grow by 25% through 2022. And that's not just becoming a pilot. There's a lot more that you can do in the aviation related fields. So as the Boeing company's pilot and technician outlook says, they project that 804,000 new pilots are needed, 769,000 new maintenance technicians, 914,000 new cabin crew will be needed to fly and maintain the world fleet over the next 20 years. So these are a lot of the programs that we have in these um, various fields. So in terms of bachelor's, master's, all the way up to the doctorate and PhD level. So as you can see, um, aeronautical science is our flight program. So we do offer um, fixed and rotary. So both airplane and helicopter. Um, our helicopter uh, training is only available in Prescott, Arizona. So um, air traffic management, aviation business administration, forensic accounting and fraud examination. Um, logistics and supply chain management at the bachelor level, um, and then you can move on to the master's or doctorate level, or you can just come for a master degree as well. So each master degree are typically two years, bachelor degrees are typically four years, and then the doctorate level um, kind of can change and fluctuate, but it's mainly between five and seven years. All right, so moving on to engineering and space, kind of our bread and butter, you could say. Um, we are the nation's largest educator of aerospace engineers. Um, real world research that could take you anywhere in the world. Um, we do have state-of-the-art labs and facilities on our campus where you will be using the practical knowledge, not just theoretical. Um, so it will be a lot of hands-on that you're actually going to be doing. So uh, we do offer internships and co-ops you know, on our campus, as well as we do have a research center right next to our campus. It's called the Micaplex. Um, where we have such um, businesses as Boeing, um, you know, Siemens has been in there, SpaceX, um, but there's a lot of startups uh, and options for startups to be in there. Uh, we kind of call it the incubation center because anybody that wants to try to begin a business is able to move into that space, um, conduct research, and then once they outgrow that space, they can move on. So these are our programs in engineering and space. Um, what's really cool about our these programs and a lot of our others as well is we offer what's called an accelerated master's program. So you would begin your bachelor degree 
and then you would be approved to move on to your master's degree in your last year of your bachelor's. And then it would only take one additional year to obtain your master's. So instead of the usual six years, it would actually knock it down to five years. Um, aerospace engineering, astronomy and astrophysics, we do have space physics, space flight operations. Um, like I said, seven of our alums have actually become astronauts. So um, they have studied through Embry-Riddle um, and have gone through that process as well. Um, moving on to the master degrees in electrical and computer engineering, software engineering, systems engineering. So almost any kind of engineering that you would want, um, you know, we pretty much have. And then we do have up to the PhD and doctorate level um, if you wanted to continue your studies that way as well. All right, so moving on to safety, security, and intelligence. So this is one realm that is very important to the world right now um, and it has been growing that way too so with all the different threats that we've been having um, in terms of cybersecurity and intelligence you know we do love that we have the first um, cybersecurity and intelligence um, college in the entire u.s so um, you know we're able to we were able to pull um, people from homeland security from the cia um, to actually come and teach our classes. So you don't have somebody teaching classes that has never actually dealt with these real life situations. Um, you know, they're, they actually have been there, they've lived it, um, and they're able to teach you what they've learned um, and still some theoretical knowledge as well. So, all right, the different types of programs that we have um, in terms of bachelor's degrees. So we have cyber intelligence and security, global conflict studies, homeland security, and all of our programs are open to all international students. Um, the only exception would be our unmanned aircraft system science at the bachelor level. That's not available in the Daytona Beach campus, but it is available in the Prescott, Arizona campus. So only because it has a military grade curriculum, so you need a, to be a US citizen in order to be eligible for that specific program, the unmanned aircraft system science, um, but just at Daytona Beach. Otherwise, everything else um, is available to all international students. And then in master's degrees, um, you know, human security and resilience, safety science, security and intelligence studies as well. All right, and then moving on to applied sciences. So applied science, um, you know, actually means that. So you're kind of applying the sciences um, to these different uh, types of programs. So weather and patterns, human behavior, technology, aerospace, global security, all of these are in the realm of applied sciences. Um, whatever your focus, there's a research component that involves solving real-world challenges for you. So moving on, these are our uh, degree programs for applied science. We have aerospace physiology, applied biology, applied meteorology, um, computer science, forensic biology, forensic psychology. So if you want to be pre-med, you want to be pre-law, if you want to do um, go into psychology, if you want to go into human psychology, um, human factor psychology, I mean, um, that has to do with um, literally how humans react with machines. So um, from sitting in a seat in a car to sitting in a cockpit in an airplane to the different types of um, keyboards, the different types of, if you're a gamer, um, the different types of um, controllers that you use, how your hands fit, um, you know, what buttons to push. So all of that has to do with human factors psychology. Um, so it's literally how humans and machines interact. Um, meteorology, simulation science, games, and animation. We have that available at both of our campuses. So um, they're literally our classes that you just sit there and play games um, in order to determine how you can build your own game as well. All right, so moving on to our campuses, um, I'm going to give you some brief overviews of both of our campuses in the United States. Um, so like I said, we have a campus in Daytona Beach, Florida, campus in Prescott, Arizona. We do also offer the Embry-Riddle Language Institute at both of our campuses, um, which is our own language uh, program. So it's an intensive English program. There's five levels. Um, and you can learn um, your language proficiency through them, and then you can move on to your degree program. Um, or if you just want to come and learn some English, um, you're able to do that. Um, if you're not um, thinking about actually um, joining one of our programs. But we do have over 582 faculty members. Um, we have over $18 million in research funding. So research is big on our campuses. Um, and we have 273 sponsored research projects um, currently going on as well. All right, so this is going to be another quick video. Um, this is about the Daytona Beach campus.
video I think it's really cool on um, that big spaceship building as you can see here that's actually our student union um, it's a 20 million dollar building um, and we just were able to name it um, based on a donor um, and somebody that's been on our board of directors so um, it's a great building everything is in there um, including our library food uh, Starbucks um, a lot of study rooms game rooms um, some offices as well so um, it's a really impressive building uh, that's on our Daytona Beach campus so um, in terms of the Florida campus, we have 6,000 undergraduate students. Um, we're about 17% internationally recognized um, from over 107 different campuses. So as I said, we're about an hour away from the Kennedy Space Center. Um, we are actually an hour away from Orlando as well, uh, which is where I currently am. Um, that's where I live. Um, so Disney, Universal Studios, so we have a lot of theme parks, a lot of tourist attractions as well. Um, Sandy beaches, we have beautiful uh, waterways if you like to go kayaking, canoeing. Um, a lot of outdoor things as well. All right, so moving on to the Prescott, Arizona campus. Uh, here's another short video for you. Just stated, high fluid thermal conditioning, that regard, Max. Max, Mike. GC, go. Got it. Go. Fido, go. Pop, go. GNC, go. Max, go. Eagle, go. Ecom, go. FAO, go. ACO, go. So that was our Prescott, Arizona campus um, highlights. So I know um, a lot of the labs and facilities that are in there, um, there is the only planetarium in the entire Northern Arizona, uh, which is pretty cool. So you can um, take classes in there, watch movies, um, gaze at the stars, those types of things too. So um, there was an accident investigation, um, aircraft accident investigation site. Um, we have that at both of our campuses where you will go um, and try to determine um, 
you know, what actually made the airplane crash. Um, so they do have, you know, real airplanes that have crashed. They have moved those onto the accident aircraft investigation site. Um, so in terms of the Arizona campus, it's a little bit smaller than Daytona Beach. There's only about 3,000 undergraduate students. Um, they're about 7,000 or 7% international um, from 41 countries. So um, Arizona is an arid kind of desert climate. Um, it's located at the foothills of what's called the Bradshaw Mountains. Um, and so it's a very beautiful climate. Um, you can go hiking, biking, trailing, um, still canoeing. Um, both of our campuses uh, have over 300 days of sunshine um, a year, so which is um, really cool. And actually, Arizona um, was named the uh, number one cleanest air in the entire southeastern uh, or southwestern United States. All right, we do have a campus in Asia, um, as I mentioned before, so that's in Singapore. Um, they do offer part-time programs for working professionals, um, but they do have full-time programs as well. Um, you can actually go and study on this campus. Um, otherwise, you can just do part-time programs through online. Um, so they do have a limited amount of programs that are available. Um, but if you would you know, want to go and study in Singapore, you are able to, depending on what you want to do. All right, so some fast facts. 94% um, of our Embry-Riddle graduates are employed or are continuing their education within one year of graduating. So what that means is that we get you ready for success. So we get you ready for the next step. Um, a lot of our students actually have a job offer in hand um, up to a year before they're going to graduate. So we do have um, that extensive um, alumni network. As I had mentioned before, over 137,000 alums are out there in the world. Um, you know, and they're waiting to help their um, alma mater. So anybody from Embry Riddle, um, you know, is able to get in touch with them as well, um, and through our faculty too. So these are a lot of the program or the programs, the companies um, that our students have actually gone to. Um, some of these companies actually were founded by Embry Riddle alums. Um, you can go to Boeing, Piper, um, JPL, any branch of the military, NASA, FedEx. Um, so it just kind of de um, determines, you know where you want to go and what you want to do. Um, Raytheon, ExoJet, um, you know, they could be a little bit smaller companies, um, but that is definitely something that, you know, during your studies, you're able to internship at a lot of these companies. And then um, when you're ready to actually graduate, um, you can go and work there. So student employment on campus. So you can work up to 20 hours per week during the school year. And this is anywhere in the US. Um, but it would only have to be, so if you're on an F1 visa, you can only work on campus um, unless it's what's what we call OPT, which I'll actually um, talk about in the next slide. So up to 40 hours during a week um, during school breaks on campus. So sample jobs could include lab technicians, IT support, maybe a scheduler at the flight line, a tour guide, um, or admissions support as well. So in terms of campus life and student activities, um, Daytona Beach Athletics, so we are NCAA Division II. Um, these are the different types of sports that you're able to um, participate in, um, but you have to be um, actually recruited by one of our coaches in order to um, be on the collegiate athletic team. Um, and we have all the information on how to become an NCAA athlete um, on our website as well. And then in terms of Prescott, um, they are the NAIA, so kind of the same thing as NCAA. Um, so it is competitive. Um, sports on campus, so they do have pretty much everything that we have as well. Uh, rowing, soccer, softball, um, those types of things. All right, we do have um, over 300 clubs and organizations on both of our campuses, so it just kind of depends on what you're into. Um, we have fraternities, sororities, in terms of our Greek life, um, cultural, we have professional, recreational, special interest clubs. Um, what's really cool about um, Embry-Riddle, and I'll move on to Prescott as well, um, is that, you know, we do have clubs pretty much for anybody, but if there is a specific club that you're interested in that we don't have, all you need is one additional person and then you can form your own club. Um, we do give our students um, the freedom to be able to do that. All right, so moving on to curricular practical training and optional practical training. So in terms of CPT, as it's called, um, it's directly related to the student's major field of study. So this happens while you are completing your degree program. So you are actually working. You could work on campus or it could be off campus as an internship. It could be overseas. Um, it could be here in the United States. It just kind of depends, um, but it has to do um, with your degree program because you will receive credit um, 
you know, for whatever you do through CPT. OPT um, is a little bit different. So it, the authorization does come from the government and it takes three to five months. Um, so, and this happens after you graduate. So it must be related to the major field of study, happens after graduation, must be recommended by SIPS, um, which is the um, categorization of your specific program. So um, standard OPT is 12 months, but the STEM extension OPT can be up to an additional 24 months. There is only um, one OPT that's available per degree level. So at the bachelor level, um, you can complete your bachelor degree and then go on OPT um, for at least 12 months. And then if you were in a STEM field, um, you can extend that to an additional 24 months. And then say that you want to come back to Embry Riddle, study your graduate degree, then you can do it all over again. You can pretty much stay in the United States for the three years um, after your undergrad, and then up to three years after your graduate degree as well. In terms of tuition, um, our residential campuses, um, undergraduate estimated costs are around 52,000 US dollars um, per year. And then graduate is about 34, <coughs> excuse me, 34,000 um, US dollars per year. So, um, and that's for non-flight students um, at the undergraduate level. So um, for flight students, you should plan an additional um, 15 to 25,000 dollars per year that you're going through the flight program, which typically takes about three years. Um, but the 52,000 covers pretty much everything on campus. So living on campus, meal plan on campus, your books, your fees, um, and all of your tuition as well. And then Worldwide Online is a little bit more affordable. However, they don't offer as many of the programs um, and not everybody you know, will be successful with online study, but if that is definitely something that you're interested in, like me right now, I'm currently doing my master's through Ember Riddle Worldwide um, online. So the undergraduate estimated costs are around 11,456 US dollars. And then in terms of the graduate, um, it's around 9,700 US dollars um, per year. There are nine week courses, um, and you just have things to do pretty much every week. In terms of scholarships, um, we do offer scholarships at the undergraduate um, level. So they have to do with the SAT or ACT test scores and your high school GPA. Um, if you are a transfer student, we do accept transfer students. So if you're currently in a university and you want to transfer to Embry-Riddle, uh, we would evaluate your credit to see what transfer credit you would uh, be able to obtain at Embry-Riddle based on what you've already completed. Um, but we would also um, uh, consider you for a transfer scholarship. So that has to do with your transfer GPA. Um, in terms of graduate programs, um, we do offer scholarships based on the GRE or the GMAT. Um, those are standardized tests as well. Um, but we do also provide what's called assistantships. So what that means is that you can, so after you've begun your degree program, you can see what assistantships are open on our campus. You can apply for them just like any other um, job on campus. And then it would be a contract between you and the department. Depending on um, what the contract is, you could potentially get up to $20,000 per year um, paid for, which is essentially your tuition, um, to work for uh, whatever department that you would be working for. In terms of the admissions um, criteria, um, the application is online. We do not use the common app. Um, $50 application fee. We're able to waive that um, since everybody is on this webinar with me today. Um, we do require um, your official high school or college transcripts. Uh, we do require your official TOEFL or IELTS scores. So you need to um, provide language proficiency. Um, in terms of SAT or ACT score, those are only for um, the scholarship consideration, not for admissions. One other thing I forgot to mention is that if you are actively recruited by um, the, one of the athletic teams, um, we do offer sports scholarships as well um, at both of our campuses. So you're eligible for sports scholarships um, as long as you um, do become an NCAA athlete and you are recruited by our coaches. That's something that will go through you and our coach. Um, a foreign credential evaluation is usually only required for any college um, transcripts from outside of the United States. Some high schools we do require it for, uh, but most you know, we won't. Um, recommendation letters, personal statements are only recommended, they're not required. And then the affidavit of financial support and copy of passport are required for the I-20 um, for your F-1 visa. In terms of the graduate, everything's pretty much the same, except for we do require 
um, GRE or GMAT for some of our programs. Um, we do require your resume. We do require the three recommendation letters and your statement of objectives as well. All right, so in thinking about what you want to do, um, where you want to go, where you want to study, what you want to do after you study, uh, become familiar with academic trends and employment options in your country um, if you want to return back to your country um, after graduation. You could potentially stay in the U.S., you could go somewhere else, so just whatever country that you were thinking that you would maybe want to go to after you graduate, um, definitely think about those things. Explore beyond the obvious career path. So everybody knows the doctors, the lawyers, the teachers. Um, just think about what potentially would um, you be successful at and you know because the times are changing so it's like we're kind of going through what they call as a third industrial revolution um, so what that means is that jobs are changing all the time and the job that you get after you graduate may not be um, even there right now so it could be something that's created um, based on the needs of the world consider the school's on-campus resources including aircraft simulators labs facilities those types of things Find and read books that are about areas that interest you. Um, know before you go. So wherever you go, wherever you study, um, anywhere in the world, just know um, know about it. So know about the university, the area, um, all that stuff, and then keep an open mind and explore your options for studying abroad. So even though you actually came abroad to study in the U.S., you can still study outside of the U.S. for one semester. Um, South America, Europe, um, Asia, so anywhere else. Um, you know, you're able to go and study through um, partners. So you know where you're going, we can help you get you there. Um, fly an airplane, design an engine, lead an industry, predict the weather, explore outer space. So there's a lot of different things in the STEM fields that you're actually able to do after you graduate. And then here's our contact information, depending on the campus that you're interested in. Um, anything that comes to the Florida campus, you know, I'll be able to see as well. Um, but Arizona, worldwide, and our Asian campus in Singapore. All right, I think that we're going to open it up to questions now. Um, okay, looking through the chat. So I'll try to get through these. We have about 10 minutes, uh, if that's correct. So um, there was a question to be a pilot, which undergraduate program should be taken? Um, so that is the um, bachelor degree in aeronautical science, um, which is our flight program. So. I get a master's degree if my bachelor degree is in another field. Do you have online master's programs? So we do have online master's programs. They're through our worldwide online campus. Um, and you can get a master's degree if your bachelor degree is in a different field. So um, there's maybe some prerequisites that you need to complete before you're eligible for the master's program. So if you were in a bachelor degree in, say, international business, and you want to go for a master's in aerospace engineering, um, there may be a disconnect there in terms of the courses that you've taken and what you have needed to take in terms of a prerequisite um, to study there. So um, it just kind of depends on what master degree you want to pursue. Um, if it's in a completely unrelated field like business to engineering, um, you know, that might be something that you need to work with our program coordinators on. They're ultimately the ones that make the decision to admit. Otherwise, um, if it's kind of similar, so if you did mechanical engineering in undergrad and then you wanted to do computer engineering and grad, um, then that potentially is something that you're able to do, yes. Um, scholarships for international students. So like I mentioned before, um, it has to do with the SAT or ACT at the undergraduate level. So if you're a high school student um, and have not completed any college or university credits, um, we would base your scholarship consideration on the SAT or ACT in your high school GPA. Um, if you have completed uh, university credit um, but have not gotten your degree program yet and you want to transfer to Embry-Riddle, then you're able to um, be eligible for the transfer scholarship based on your transfer GPA. And then in terms of the graduate programs, um, that would have to do with the GRE or the GMAT and your um, undergraduate degree programs GPA as well. All right. Um, so we went over some of the rankings. Um, we're the number one aerospace engineering program in the entire US. We ranked um, number one best in university for veterans, uh, number one in online programs at the bachelor degree level. So a lot of our rankings can be found on what's called US News and World Report. Um, just do an internet search for it, um, you know, and you can go over. But I do want to kind of not necessarily steer you away from rankings, but 
you know, just look into what universities, what locations, what programs are interest you. Um, because just because a university is ranked very highly um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a great fit for you. So um, I do want you to expand your mind a little bit um, and look at you know, universities and colleges all over um, to see, you know, it's great to see what you know, their strengths are. However, um, make sure that it's the right fit for you too, okay? All right. Um, can we complete the whole study duration in any worldwide campus? I mean, do we need to be registered to one of the USA campuses? You do not, um, so you can do it all online. So you never have to come to the US if you don't want to um, or if you don't need to. So um, you can do your entire program online. Um, you know, Typically, they take the same amount of time. So a bachelor degrees take four years. Um, and then the graduate degrees take typically about two years. So it depends on you know if you have a full-time job and you're trying to juggle that with the school work as well. Um, but you, if you're really interested in school and you want to just go throughout the entire year, um, you may be able to save some time, um, but still making sure that you are passing your classes. All right. Do you have any academic collaboration with Turkish Airlines or any Turkish universities? Um, that is definitely something that I would have to look into. Um, we do have a study abroad office specifically for um, you know, our Turkish universities or any university in the world. Um, so we would have a, an agreement with a university that you're able to go and study there um, through our study abroad program. In terms of the airlines, um, as of right now, I know that we have one with United, we have one with Delta, we have one with um, Korean Air, we have one with um, China Air, I believe. Um, and I think that we have one somewhere in Europe, um, but it just kind of depends. So um, that is something that I can look into. Um, if you send me an email um, having to do, like at the Florida campus right here, um, then we'll be able to look into that for you a little bit more. All right, I have the web page in contact. Okay, the um, I'm gonna type in the web page. <laughs> And then you can look at any of our campuses um, directly on that web page as well. Um, scholarship for basketball players, that's going to be the NCAA scholarships. Um, in terms of Turkish students, I don't have that number off the top of my head. Um, I do know that it isn't um, a very large number. I believe the last time I looked at it, I think that we had probably five undergraduate um, and maybe two graduate students. Um, from Turkey. So there still will be um, you know, more from Turkey that you're able to see. Um, but if you and a couple of your friends you know, want to come to Every Riddle, then you guys would be studying together as well. But uh, we do have students from Turkey. I do know that. I just don't know the exact number off the top of my head. Um, in terms of Turkish faculty members as well, I'm not 100% sure. Um, we do have a wide variety of um, nationalities on our faculty. So that is definitely something that I'm able to um, look into for you. Um, but I just don't know that number off the top of my head either. So. Right. so we have a few more minutes here. Um, if anybody else has any other questions, um, you know, please put them in the chat, and then I'll be able to um, go over them with you. Um, in terms of the nationality mix of students, I mean, we have students on our campuses um, at Arizona and Florida, you know, from over 125 different countries. Um, so pretty much almost anywhere. Um, you know, our biggest mix is going to be, um, our top four are going to be China, Saudi Arabia, Korea, um, and India. So those are our top four. Um, and then everybody else under that, um, it just kind of trickles down. So we do have from all continents except for Antarctica. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any polar bears or penguins. <laughs> um, but pretty much from anywhere else, we do have um, students. And in terms of the presentation, I believe the recording will be available to everyone. Um, you'll receive the link. Um, that you're able to go back, go over all the information, um, you know, and review what we've gone over today. Um, and then if you have any other questions, like I said, our contact information is available, um, and you will be, um, you will have that as well. So. Mm -hmm. Başka sorusu olan var mıdır arkadaşlar?
E, varsa eğer son sorularınızı alalım, e, Robert onları cevapladıktan sonra tamamlamış olacak sunumunu. Zannedersem başka sorunuz yok. O zaman ben teşekkür edeceğim Robert'a ve size de katıldığınız için çok teşekkür ediyorum. Robert, it was a great presentation. Thank you so much for your effort. Thank you so much. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.